Welcome from the people of Oviedo Presbyterian Church and Hope Presbyterian Church at Lake Nona. Friends, let's magnify the Lord. Let's exalt His name together. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built a lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at his command, and all the stars obey. There's not a plant or flower below, but makes the glories known, and clouds arise and tempest blow. I order from the throne Here is another illustration Jesus used. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants and grows into a tree where birds can come and find shelter in its branches. Jesus also used this illustration. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast used by a woman making bread. Even though she used a large amount of flour, the yeast permeated every part of the dough. What is God up to? How does God get things done? I know that I often give God my two cents about how he ought to do things. But what if God's methods and purposes are different than our own? Jesus' followers knew that mustard seeds would grow into mustard plants, trees, and that a little bit of yeast would be enough for an entire batch of bread. They'd seen a bit of yeast, leaven, an entire loaf. They've seen how little things make a big difference, but they probably never imagined much that God would do so much with little things. The kingdom of God is like this little seed. The kingdom of God is like a pinch of yeast, Jesus says, not a mighty king or army or a prosperous nation, but a little seed or a little yeast. Yes, the leaven is tiny, but it'll transform the entire loaf. The seed is small, but soon it will give shade and relief and spices. Is this just poetic imagery that Jesus is talking about, or is it an essential attribute of the kingdom of heaven? Does God use small things to accomplish huge tasks? One of the tragedies in churches is when we elevate the big things done by the few, over the small things done by the many. When people focus on overtly religious acts rather than just simply being a follower of Christ, going where he leads us. In Matthew 25, Jesus tells the, the parable of the judgment. And it is those who gave water to someone who was thirsty, food to the hungry, welcomed a stranger, clothes to the naked, visited someone in prison that had done so to the king and received the reward. Jesus says, as often as you have done to the little of these, you have done it unto me myself. These things like a little water or a little food or some clothes to someone in need might seem like common sense kindness to us. But these small things, even though they might not appear particularly religious, Jesus lifts up as huge and worthy in the kingdom of heaven. The rulers of Jesus' day, as they have throughout the ages, often pursued the big and the mighty and not paid as much attention to the small and those who are in need and humility. Many invested in cathedrals and even crusades rather than seeking the lost or caring for the poor. Christians were often better known by a couple people on TV asking for money, more money for their huge empire 
than we are for those who offer themselves in humble service behind the scenes. Tiny pieces, us little people, each doing something small is what God uses to change everything around us and to grow into something worthy of the kingdom of God. For we are God's seed. We are his leaven in our homes, our neighborhoods, community, with impacts that reach into the entire world. We contain different gifts and different callings, but we all share that nature of the seed and of the leaven that draws people to Christ. Sure, it may seem like one person can't make much of that a difference. We may say, hey, but you know, I'm not a preacher or these other things that we consider very religious. And you might not be, and we aren't all that much. But in God's hand, we are that seed and that leaven that grows into something big and affects everything that is around us. Even as we are apart, it's easy to think that churches are closed at this time. But God's church never closes. The body of Christ never ceases. We may, may not be gathering in the same place in a building we call the church, but we are to be Christ's church, especially now. As we are apart and our circles of social um, connections might get a little smaller, we have an opportunity to make an even larger difference. And it may be in these simple things of helping a neighbor, providing for someone who's in need, being kind and gentle when it's necessary. Because if God's will rules in your life, a piece of the kingdom of heaven lives there in who you are and what you do. You may not uh, associate it with something that you call church, but if Christ is present in you, you carry a small piece of him everywhere you go, and it grows into something large. The kingdom of heaven, as it expands and grows, is often the result of small and what we might think insignificant things that are done. It's saying yes to Jesus in our lives. It's living and serving as Jesus lives in us. It will be living as Jesus in the small things rather than in the big things. It'll be given of yourself for people who have nothing. For that is what Jesus did for us. It will be mixing with the world and filling it with Christ's presence. Not hiding and building walls to protect ourselves. It will be as we serve others rather than seeking to be served ourselves. Mother Teresa once said that she served the poorest of the poor, for that was where she saw Jesus. And it will be in showing love to people who don't love us back. It will be kind to people who are not kind. It will be taking the time to care for someone for whom no one else cares. Amazing grace is that while we were still sinners was exactly when Christ died for us. We do these things for the sake of the kingdom, not in order for us to be saved or to earn our salvation, but we do it in grateful response for all that God has done for us. We don't do it to be saved. We do it because we are saved. God is in the small deeds that are done in faith, not just the big. It isn't something that we just think about. It is the way we are to live. Sing like never before 
draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forever more bless the lord bless the lord oh my soul oh, oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before From Paul's letter to the Romans, listen to the word of the Lord. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance to God's will. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Rome, which he has never visited. It's comprised of both Jews and Gentiles, folks for whom there are stark lines of difference in their experience. And yet they share the same spirit, the spirit who sets them free from the law of sin and death. Last week we looked at the text in which Paul said that he considers that these present sufferings are nothing when compared to the glory that's about to be revealed. He spoke about how all of creation has been groaning in anticipation as though with labor pains. So there is this travail, this pain in the present, anticipating the good that is to come. And even we, he writes, even the church, groans inwardly as we await the redemption of our bodies, this future glory that God is going to reveal. While we wait, we are conscious of our weakness. And here is the great promise. The Spirit, Paul writes, helps us in our weakness. For we don't even know how to pray as we ought. Can you just imagine that? There are a few things that feel more rudimentary to a life with God than prayer. And yet, even this symptom of a pursuit of the God life is inhibited by our own capacity or incapacity. We don't even know how to pray as we ought, he writes, but the Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words, intercedes for saints, according to the will of God. In other words, God does the heavy lifting. Many of us have suffered from the illusion or possibly even been taught that a connection with God is dependent on us. We have to pray the right way or maybe even pray the right prayer, use the right words, think the right things, live the right way, make the right choices, believe the right doctrines. And yet even something as simple as prayer cannot be done in our own power. Not just because we don't have the right words, but because we don't even know what to want. This is where the Spirit intercedes on our behalf, aligning our prayer with God's will. That's a help. The line with God is broken, and yet God, God's self, steps in to repair the line of communication. 
Many of us recognize that on occasion we have experiences that transcend the capacity of language. Perhaps we've been touched by a sorrow so profound that we can't give words to it. Or maybe a confusion that eludes our capacity to express because we can't even untangle what we're thinking, much less give words to it. Or on the positive side, maybe we have been so moon-eyed in love that we can't describe it, we just feel it. And conversely, we've also experienced times when communication occurs without words. Perhaps it's a raised eyebrow and volumes are spoken without language. Young parents often talk about how they learn to recognize the wordless cries of their newborns. That cry means he's hungry. That cry means she's wet. That cry means the baby is in pain or sleepy. So without the benefit of language, communication and experience is occurring. Thanks be to God, when we have these experiences, when we don't have language, the Spirit understands the Spirit undertakes on our behalf, and the Spirit prays that what we are offering in our own life of faith will align with the will of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand in his presence blameless and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Be all glory, majesty, power, and authority, both now and forever. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, 
now worship your holy name. Oh, that's right. I'm first. <laughs> Sorry.